The Buccaneers now have company when it comes to pro football here in Tampa Bay. Tampa's new XFL team is starting to take shape. The future of the XFL that rebooted XFL, that is. The XFL officially announcing its return after 20 years. This is the future. This is not the past. This is the future, and the future moves fast. This is quicker, simpler, rules, reform. This is your game, safer. This is football, reborn. This is gaming and fantasy. This is padded, roulette, make a trade, make a team, make a move, make a bet. This is fans above all. This is maximum action. Let's stall, more ball. Fewer infractions, this begins in 2020. The future is near. More access, more everyone, more everything here. This is our moment, our story to tell. This is history begun. This is the XFL. Eight minutes left in the first quarter. We're just underway. That's Derek Clark, and that's an easy touchdown. this game tonight after taking that hit just six days ago well let me answer let me answer that question by asking you two questions one is this or is this not the xfl yes it is two do i or do i not currently have a pulse yes i do let's play football and a man wide open and it's picked off by kelly malvo We were about 20 years, exactly 20 years ago, when we announced the original XFL. We're really looking forward to uh, once again establishing a very exciting, innovative uh, form of football that, quite frankly, you've never seen before. The game will be fast-paced, it'll be affordable, family-friendly, interactive, as technologically advanced as possible, and played at eight fantastic venues in eight incredible cities. The XFL is being built for fans and built to last. Prior to the league opening up, they had these uh, commercials where I really think anybody that saw those commercials thought that if a head coach didn't like a like a, a referee's call, he was going to hit him with a chair like in pro wrestling. And of course, that was never the intent, but I think that's what I think a, a lot of fans were looking forward to. We want to avoid gimmicks. We want to play real 11-on-11, uh, 11 four-down football that Americans know and love. I think there'll be very little that uh, the XFL 2020 uh, has in common with the XFL 2001. That was a one-and-done league. Uh, it was a joint venture between uh, WWE and NBC Sports. Uh, they didn't get quality football, and I think that'll be probably the biggest difference is that we've been working now for over a year uh, and are now in this phase of actually working players out and beginning to sign players. We have our coaching staffs in place where we've got plenty of time uh, to put our teams together with the right personnel, the right coaching staffs to play good quality football. That's probably the big, single biggest difference. I think the thing that's different now with this relaunch or the restart or 2.0 is that there's time and that there's money and there's capital and there's resources that are available. That's why in Tampa Bay we say it's game day every day. And we could not be more excited to be working with the XFL to make Tampa Bay the benchmark franchise for the league in 2020. be passionate, diehard football fans. Basically, people 
who want more football. Uh, after the Super Bowl, there's often a void in the lives of, we think, about 40 million people in this country because they're passionate football fans who want to watch more football. We think we can deliver a high quality game. I think Florida's a great football state more than anything else. And again, if it's, if it's uh, decent football and it's well run, they'll come out and support it. We've got lots of different types of players. We've got guys who've been in the NFL for, uh, as, as they say, a cup of coffee. Uh, we've had guys who've won two Super Bowls that came out for one of our showcases up in New York. Uh, we've got guys who've started, been all pro players. Uh, we've got young guys uh, who are just a year out of college who just won an opportunity. So I think it's hard to say there's one sort of archetype for a football player for our league. We want basically uh, the best players that aren't on NFL rosters to be in our league. And from the looks of guys like this, I think we're not too far from that. I feel like it's a great opportunity for the people that haven't been around football or the people who just got out of football. I just feel like it's a great opportunity for everybody collectively to get together and get a team going and get a union going to give everybody the opportunity to get back doing what they're doing. Because I feel like it's a lot of talent still out there and elsewhere and all around the U.S. So I feel like it's a great opportunity for everybody. You know, I had an opportunity to come to Tampa as a, as a young kid and grow here. Um, you know, grow up into a young man and, and develop. And actually, this, this was the university that gave me the opportunity to play football in the first place. So uh, to come back to this community, to be around the same fans and same friends and family, that'd be amazing. Um, you know, I have family and people that haven't had the opportunity to see me play professional sports before, uh, being that I've been in Seattle and San Francisco. So the travel has been, you know, pretty taxing. But uh, if I can just be here in Tampa and people can just hop in the car and drive a couple hours, come see me, that'd be great. He's a great human being. Players love him. He had a great day out here today watching him throw. I mean, he, he made all the throws through the deep ball. You know, you can see he's a team guy, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to know him, you know, as we proceed on in the process. Players we want in the league will be signed by the league and go into a pool. And that pool will be a draft that will take place in October. I just want to play again. That's really. That's really what I'm interested in, getting to go out there and compete and play. Tampa's a, a very good sports town. Uh, obviously, Florida, uh, along with Texas, are the two football states in this country. Uh, lots of professional teams, lots of great college programs in this state, lots of great football players in this state, lots of great high school and youth football in this state. So uh, the facility here in Tampa, it's a beautiful stadium. Uh, the hospitality that we uh, received here, I'm good friends with Bruce Arians, and Bruce uh, raves about the reception he's received here in, in Tampa. And uh, we think that you know, for all, the, all those factors, uh, Tampa makes a lot of sense for one of our franchises. In the shadows, they wait. Demons born in darkness. Hunters by instinct. Cold-blooded by nature. Their bite, unavoidable. Their grip, inescapable. They slither and stalk their competition, luring all who challenge them into the jaws of defeat. The Tampa Bay Vipers, ready to strike. February 2020. I don't know what's to come of it, but um, you know I'm excited to be a part of it and have this opportunity. 20 years after the fact, we uh, when we heard that uh, uh, Mr. McMahon was going to bring it back, we were all joking about, hey, let's put a team in Orlando and get the old staff back together. Good quality football, very affordable prices, uh, broadcast times where folks can really, you know, set their schedule on watching football, much like Sunday, you know, with the National Football League. Uh, lots of in-game entertainment that people will like, up-tempo, fast-paced game with lots of scoring. Uh, we think all of those factors will contribute to a great 
a day out that folks in the Tampa Bay region will really enjoy. More and more people will get to know it, and more and more players are going to want to be a part of it. The first offensive play from scrimmage, and quarterback Jeff Brown goes deep king. He goes deep. The Kevin Swain is my name. 51 yards. Kevin Swain ran by the defenders like they were standing still, and he has scored the historic first. America needs more football, that's, uh, that's our premise.